Hello and welcome back, my extremely tiny socks. It's Super John Bombo here, and today we're going to show you guys my top five strategies in Balloons Tower Defense 6. There are 13 heroes you get to pick from, there are 22 different monkeys you can pick from, there's over 50 something, maybe even 60 maps in this game. There's so many strategies you can come up with. I would say infinite strategies you could come up with. So how do you decide which one is the best? Well, there really isn't one strategy that rules them all, because maps and things and all that stuff is always different, right? But today I'm going to guide you guys through a couple different strategies that I think are going to really help you out in this game. Number 5. To start you guys off, we're going to go with the Oban Druid strategy. And the way we're going to break these guys down is we're going to start off with an early game aspect, a mid game aspect, and a late game aspect of this strategy. How does it all work and how does it all work together? In addition, I want to point out that we are playing without any monkey knowledge here, so this is all 100% possible for a completely new player. So let's break down why this strategy is so good. It all revolves around Oban. Oban Greenfoot is a great hero when you use him properly. The main thing you gotta understand is that at level 2 alone, all druids in range get plus 1 pierce. Pierce is going to be the amount of balloons that we go through, so basically our shotgun druid that normally pops 4 or 5 balloons is going to go into 8 or 10 balloons, and that is an extremely powerful aspect of the game very early on here. So to start off, you want to make sure that you've got open, surrounded by a bunch of low-level druids, and if you want to be extra specially efficient, what you can do to your druids is get them up to Thorn Swarm, which shoots 8 thorns per shot instead of 5, doubling our popping power from 8 all the way up to 16 when surrounded by Oban, and you can tell that you're getting that buff if Oban has his little face around you. So in the early game, your main goal is to get at least five druids, uh, possibly six or seven or eight if you really feel like it, and get them all up to Thorn Swarm here, and that's going to guide you through a really, really long time here. I would recommend getting at least one druid up to Heart of the Thunder here so we can pop the lead balloons as well, and you're pretty much set. In the mid game, make sure you've got your cam detection village by this point, maybe even by round 33. Start getting all of your druids up to pop lust druids. These are going to be extremely fast shooting druids that do tons of damage to moabs and balloons alike. Now, the main level that you're going to be worried about here is level 11 for open, because that is going to finally change things in your favor. It's going to allow you to get more range for not just druids, but now all magic monkeys give you plus two pierce on those guys, and druids get an additional pierce on top of that, so now you can start to use other magic monkeys if you feel like it, like super monkeys and things like that. But, we're gonna continue on with our druid army. Also, in addition, you should probably start alchemizing some of your druids. Definitely worth it to get at least a few, uh, four, two elks up in here, and that'll give you a ton of extra popping power. Make sure at this point, whatever druid you have has a times five right next to his name. That means five other poplush druids are speeding him up. Some of the ones on the fringe here might not be at five times, so definitely don't get this guy up to your Avatar of Wrath. You want to pick one of them in the middle, right next to Oban, right next to all of your druids, and then get the Avatar of Wrath over here. And that is going to be basically the best way to get you almost all the way to round 100 here. Just buy whatever you want at this point. This is a super awesome strategy and a su super awesome start. You're going to notice this guy is going to be pretty much almost everything you need. Only other thing that I'd recommend is probably get some sort of MIB here, because he can suck a little bit against DPTs. And with this strategy, you're going to be rocking round 98, 99, and 100 in no time at all. Look at this absolute destruction here, guys. Even the bad balloon has no idea what's coming for him. He will easily be destroyed. Number four. We're talking about the primary strategy. That involves all primary monkeys here, all these blue monkeys right here. You're not limited to just the primary monkeys themselves, but they are definitely good when you work them together as a squad. The main towers you want to go for are a bottom path tax shooter, likely with faster shooting, even faster shooting, get the scout to fourth tier, and eventually up to fifth tier. In addition, going with a crossbow monkey here is great for popping a bunch of these higher tier balloons and camo balloons. Don't forget to put them on strong if you're feeling it. And we're going to go with Pat as our hero because when we use his ability, it's going to make our tax shooter just that much more beautifully amazing here. This strategy is absolutely disgustingly amazing because of the amount of buffs that you can get for your primary towers. First of all, we gotta talk about Pat and why we picked Pat as our hero. He's got something called a Rallying Roar, which for, uh, right now, 
allows your towers to pop an extra layer for a short time or doing an extra damage to these balloons. That's pretty awesome. Pat's not there yet, but once he gets to the later part of the game here, Rallying Roar at level 14 increases the radius and duration and increased damage of all rallied, rallied monkeys, and that just makes Pat absolutely disgustingly powerful in combination with these monkeys. Plus, he's pretty good by himself, knocking back Moebs and doing tons of damage to balloons as well. Now that, in combination with the primary training upgrade, is really where everything is at because we have to talk about primary training. Primary training is going to allow all your primary monkeys radius to get more range, pierce, and projectile speed. That's pretty sweet in itself, but once you finally get to primary mentoring, all monkeys and radius get tier 1 upgrades for free, increased range, and reduced ability cooldowns. All of that combined together means primary mentoring and primary training are be like the number one things that you're going to want to buy here to make your towers already more powerful. And I think the number one thing that it really helps out here is going to be your tax zone. So you can notice the range on this guy, it's decent, but when you finally get this, it's going to be pretty significantly good. When you finally get this, it's going to be pretty significantly awesome. And that's why the tax zone in combination with this guy is going to be so absolutely beautiful. We're probably good until round 80 plus at this point. Once we get to the late game, we can multiply our damage even further by getting something like a super brittle. This is going to allow you to do extra damage to all the balloons in your range here that you can hit with your ice tower. It's super ridiculously powerful. But the only thing you're still going to have to watch out for is, of course, DDTs. DDTs are still not going to be easy with a primary mentoring strategy. You either need to get another additional village up to third tier middle path, uh, which is a very reasonable thing to do to get an MIB. It's not that expensive, but it does cost extra money. Uh, or you can try to get some other towers that can just support you in popping the DDTs, like a Spike Storm, or maybe a Prince of Darkness, or even a Perma Spike or something like that, just to clean up all the balloons in the back. Any which way that you do it, just make sure you've got some extra DDT popping power, because these guys are not always that easy. At this point, you can start building whatever primary towers fit the bill. Uh, you can go for Super Maelstroms, go for Cannons, you can go for Ice Towers, you can start getting a Perma Charge up, kind of whatever you're feeling at that point. Um, the one thing that I would recommend is kind of getting more low-tier towers than high-tier towers. I think it'll actually help you more to get those guys, rather than trying to spam a bunch of 5th tier towers and just kind of forcing them to exist. Uh, though I will say some Maelstrom guys, freaking beautiful here. And soon, you guys are going to be rocking this, you guys are going to be taking down even round 100 with no monkey knowledge at all, using these primary towers as your sole driver of destruction. Number 3! This is probably one of the weirder strategies that I'm going to show you guys, but it is extremely, extremely powerful if done properly. We're talking about the Striker Jones strategy. The reason why the Striker Jones strategy is so gosh darn powerful is just the power of Striker Jones. What he does is basically as he levels up, he's going to make uh, your bomb and mortar monkeys be stronger. And as he levels up, they're going to be stronger and stronger and stronger, increasing speed and radius and all this stuff, range, pierce. It just gets kind of like a cluster of almost everything. But the number one thing that you're looking at is late game here, around a level 19, will increase the attack speed and make all black balloons vulnerable to explosive damage, which means that the number one weakness to cannons and mortar is now officially gone. One thing you want to keep in mind with the beginning part of this strategy is that Striker Jones with cannons and mortars are not a beginner strategy. They are a late game strategy. Alright, and not an early game strategy, a late game strategy. So you do not want to focus on getting a bunch of cannons and mortars and trying to work them into some ridiculously difficult strategy here. Just get some good towers that work really well in the beginning part of the game, like a Kylie Boomerang with fast rangs or something, an unpopped army, and then start working in your cannons and your mortars. Now with this strategy, you might think you're kind of weak against Moab class balloons, but at this point, if you've got enough artillery batteries, you are not weak against those balloons. I kind of suspect that a nerf will be incoming any second now for this artillery battery and its ability, but for now, it's an extremely powerful addition to your team. Make sure you're using it. It will absolutely destroy, especially if you start spamming these guys. And in addition, don't forget that you can alchemize mortars and make them extra powerful. Uh, this is actually a really good tower to alchemize. It shoots just the right amount of speed and has just the right amount of damage to give you just that right delicious destruction right here. So start spamming some artillery batteries, alchemize them, and you're going to be good until basically the late, late part of the game here. 
once you get to the later part of the game here, especially on Troublesome Rounds, uh, start using your abilities, guys. Trust me, you're gonna love them. They will help you out so, so, so ridiculously much. Even if you have $70,000 saved up at this point, it's going to be worth it. Plus, don't forget that I haven't had to micro pretty much this entire game, but you should not be above microing. It can do things. It can actually help you. It can power you up in a lot of ways that you don't even think about. But it is kind of nice when you just get to leave them in one spot and never have to touch them. So uh, once you get past this point, though, what you want to do is you probably want to start buying some of your higher tier, fifth tier towers, like a Bloom Crush would be my... Uh, if I could stretch it, I would love to get a Bloom Crush because I never have to worry about the Moabs ever again. And then you can start worrying about other um, uh, sort of towers that start to actually kill the Bloons instead of just popping Moabs. Honestly, this looks very, very hectic, but just trust me, we are very, very powerful at this point. Uh, what we decided to do was get a Bloom Crush to just kind of crush any Moab class Bloons in the game. Then we decided to get something that could pop all the Bloons of the game, like the biggest one, in addition to the other guys in here. And then we wanted something else to make sure we have full cam detection and cleanup. We could go for a village in addition to this guy, but I just feel like it's not really necessary at this point unless we really want to force ourselves to be the most powerful that we can be. So don't forget that Artillery Command is kind of like the savior of the day here. When you've got abilities for your towers, keep on using them as much as you want because when you're ready for it, you can use your Artillery Command to get back all of those abilities and increase your damage just that much more. Don't forget that Micro is still probably somewhat important against the Bad Balloon here, no matter how strong you are uh, with your borders and everything, because Micro uh, for borders is kind of like part of the game, and we have a lot of them. So let's Micro them out and make sure we take these guys down with no problems at all. Hey, look at that, a 0, zero, zero glue gunner. How fantastic. This is not as much of a strategy per se, but I think it's a really important strategy to talk about because it's really, really, really important for understanding the economy of Bloom Star Defense 6 and how you can use it to your favor. We're talking about the farm strategy. Make extra money. And if you make extra money, it doesn't even matter if your towers are built properly and built just right and, and made to be awesome combos. If you just have so much money that you can buy whatever you want, it automatically beats everything for you. So, farm it up, guys. And the number one way to farm it up is by using Sauda. I've got two 2-0 two farms while losing only two lives uh, while using Sauda to start off my game in here. And I just randomly popped in a boomerang here to kind of support her just a little bit. And she's already doing fantastic. So get Sauda, get some farms, and then before round 28, if possible, start throwing your Alchemist down. We're going to throw him right here, and we're going to get him up to... The bottom path, hopefully before round 28 here. If you don't get him before round 28, it's not that big of a deal. It just means you're wasting out on a smidge of money. So don't feel too bad, but it's nice if you time it perfectly where you can buy that right on 28 and just make all this delicious extra cash just like that. You also want to start to get your larger potions, then honestly, as soon as possible, get that rubber to gold. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be making you so much extra money for the rest of the game here, guys. So I'm going to consider this the middle part of the game right now. I'm on round 55. I've oh, got a crap ton of just 0, 2, 3 banana farms. All right. Some of them are 203 because I started off with my 2, 0 banana farms. But I've got a lot of money saved up. I'm making a lot of money. And now I can start to buy whatever towers I want. So now it's going to be pretty much an automatic win. And some of my favorite towers are going to be the Prince of Darkness in combination with the Moab Dawn. So in the late game, build almost anything you want, but I'm building some of my favorite high tier, fifth tier towers. I decided to go for the Infernal Ring in range of a primary mentoring village. I decided to go for a Moab Dom again in range of my primary mentoring village. I decided to go for an Apache Prime, so I have unlimited range, very good against Moabs as well, and can be decent against Blooms here. And then kind of the last thing that I really wanted to get here was a Cripple Moab, just so any extra uh, Moabs that are coming in here, including like the Bad Bloom and all that, will get extra damage from this Cripple Moab in here, basically making me almost unstoppable. And at this point, it's not that we built the right towers in combination with each other, we just have so much money that we built all these super strong towers that can do different things all at the same time and just do tons of damage together. And that's what's going to beat this. So we've made it to round 98 with over $155,000 saved up. Again, I wanted to point out that these are only third tier marketplaces. These are not fourth tier. I did not go crazy with the farming. I stopped at around round 55, I believe. 
and this is how much money we're making, and this is how just how absolutely destructively powerful this combo actually is, guys. Get some money, and no matter what you build, you're gonna be beating all these balloons. I can promise you that. Number one. I did want to mention that I really tried to mix up these strategies for you guys. I didn't want to bit put just only paid heroes in here. I wanted to use both uh, free heroes and monkey knowledge heroes in here. Uh, or not monkey no <laughs> Free heroes and heroes that does do require monkey money to buy here. So anybody can find a strategy that will work for them. I also tried to mix it up with uh, different types of maps and different types of things that we might actually come across here. Even though we are playing all on monkey lane right now. And what I want you guys to realize is that this is my number one strategy that I recommend to new players specifically, but it can be used for literally anybody, anything, except for probably Chips Mode. Chips Mode, you could still use it, it's just not quite as efficient or easy to do. And that's why I love this strategy, it's just that gosh darn amazing. What you want to do is you want to get a Ninja and an Adora pretty much as quickly as possible. If you do get any other towers to kind of keep yourself from losing any lives, make sure that they are out of range or not near your other towers over here. It'll help you out a lot. When you're ready for it, get a Bloom Jitsu with Seeking Shurik sure, hitting Caltrops uh, with your Adora here. And then when you're ready for that, get your Alchemist. Now this is sort of an early slash mid-game thing because we're not going to build anything after we get a 4-2 Alchemist until around like 50-something. That's how powerful this combo is. With this strategy, I want you guys to think of these three towers kind of on their own little island. They are going to work together for the rest of the game to pop extra balloons, but they are not going to be what takes you to round 80 or round 100. What they are going to do is they're going to take you to round 55 without having to spend any extra money, maybe even up to round 60 without spending any extra money on any other towers. You can do whatever you want with all of your money from now until then. You can farm. You can decide to buy some extra extra cash flow over here with a rubber to gold. You can get ready to buy a super strong fifth tier tower. Whatever you're feeling like. Just get these two guys. You're going to have so much money and such an easy time popping these balloons. It's going to be almost ridiculous. I never want to limit you guys in any way, but this is what I did. I built a ninja. I built a Dodora. I built an alchemist. I decided to build a tech terror. And then I farmed just like the minus, most minuscule amount that I possibly could over here. I've got two third tier farms and I built a random rubber to gold here. And then I've decided, you know what? Let's do it, guys. Let's get the anti balloon. And then I know for sure I will pop everything for the rest of the game here. The anti balloon will destroy everything in our path. And that's what I think you should do. It's simple, it's easy, farm a little bit more if you want to get that a little bit faster, and uh, you're going to be destroying things in one of the easiest ways possible. I think it's always important to look at round 98, round 99, and 100, and just see how do our towers actually do here. Are they actually going to be able to keep up all of these balloons with our weirdo, kind of somewhat odd strategy sometimes? And I would say a pretty positive yes. I think without using very many abilities here, we're going to be totally fine. And if we want to use abilities to insta-kill some things, it's always kind of fun to do that. Hey, look at that. A zero, zero, zero insta. Look how happy he is. He's happy because if you guys press that like button for me, I'll be extra happy just like this guy. And, of course, I hope you guys have a super-duper delicious day.